Good morning. As we begin a brand new week and uh, our study of the book of Ephesians and our morning uh, devotional time together, we are in chapter 2 and we're looking or beginning to look at verses 11 through 22. That'll be our text for the week. Uh, This is not as familiar probably uh, to most of us as the passages we've looked at before. And it's a complicated passage. As a matter of fact, there, I think there's overlapping uh, understanding of what's going on here. We're talking about separation in two senses. And if we don't get both of those senses down pretty well, I think that we will uh, be confused by, by, by what this text is saying. There is a separation between people and God, and there's a separation between the Gentiles and the Jews. And those two separations are being overlapped in this passage of Scripture and uh, they, they mirror one another, and they explain one another, but they're both in the text. If we go to one direction or the other, then we miss uh, what uh, the Apostle Paul is trying to teach us here. So we're going to look at this passage of Scripture, and we're start with verse 11. It says, therefore, remember. Now, we want to stop there for a second. Well, remember what? Well, he's going to go backwards and forwards here. We have already looked in the earlier verses of Scripture in chapter 2 about the fact that we were at one point uh, dead in our sins, separated from God, and that only the Lord himself, in verse 4, was able to save us. So we see a general picture of the lostness of humanity and the great need for rescue that only God can provide. And we respond to that rescue plan of God by faith alone in verses 8 and 9. And then he works in our lives, making us his workmanship, his masterpiece for good works. So that was all in the first 10 verses. In verse 11, he says, therefore, remember. So he's looking backwards, but but he's also looking forward, as we will see, because now he wants to shift his direction uh, from the general picture of humanity to the more particular picture of the Gentiles and their relationship to the gospel and their relationship to God and their relationship to the Jews. So he says, therefore, remember, and this is the only time in the first three chapters that he tells us at any place to do something. Up until now, uh, there's been no instruction, no no mandate, and there will be no others in the first three chapters, which is all about our life uh, in Christ, our position in him, what he's done for us. In chapter four, he begins to tell us to do things, but not until. This is only the only time, and it's to remember something. Remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. So he's particularly addressing Gentiles. And then he says in verse 12, remember. Now, if you have a New American Standard Bible, uh, you will see here that the word remember is in italics, which means it's not in the original text. It's not in the original Greek. Uh, this is one of the advantages of, of, uh, of our Bible study and of using a good Bible that has uh, these kinds of helps. Uh, the, ES, the ESV, for example, does not uh, italicize words like this, and so we don't know from an English perspective what's in the Greek and what's not. So the New American Standard is, is the excellent, I think the most excellent, of the study Bibles. And we still have many copies, uh, hard copies, of the NASV to give you if you'd like to have those. Just let me know. He goes on, he says, Now remember that you were at at that time separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now notice a number of things that was true of of the Gentiles. They were separated from Christ. Of course, all unbelievers are separated from Christ. Secondly, they're excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. They had nothing to do with the nation of Israel. Uh, the Israel was God's chosen people in the Old Testament. Uh, the Gentiles were not part of that. There were some proselytes, but for the most part, the Gentiles uh, were excluded from the nation of Israel. And they were strangers, it says, to the covenants of promise. They, they were not part of these covenants that God had given Israel, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, and so forth. And so they were on the outskirts of that. And they have no hope, it says, having no hope. And so because they were alienated from God and his people, they have no hope in this life. And finally, and they're without God in the world. They they worship these false deities. They did not have the true God. And so they are in a spiritual mess by the end of verse 12. But verse 13 starts out this way, but now in Christ Jesus. Remember earlier in in verses 1 to 3 when we are given the 
information about how dead we are in our sins. And then in verse 4, it says, but God being rich in mercy, everything changed with those two words, but God. We have a similar thing here. The uh, Gentiles are in a spiritual mess, separated from God, separated from God's people, but now in Christ Jesus. Everything hinges now on these words, but now in Christ Jesus. That's what we're going to pick up on uh, this uh, next time. And I would encourage you to read this passage. Read, read the rest of the chapter and look for the big picture. What is the context? What is Paul trying to prove? And we'll look at it tomorrow. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. <laughs>